You ready? Yeah. Welcome to the Wolf Dead Podcast. Hope you're all doing well. I'm doing good. Will, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. I'm glad. It's good. I'm good. Glad. Good old. Good old. Uh, good old Tuesday night here. Super Mario for, uh, RPG. Wolf Dead Podcast Sony live on Twitch.tv. Donkey Kong Wolfden. 3. Sorry, Will. Uh, the Italian lady was speaking over you for a second. That's the story of my life, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Will, do you drink ale eight one? I do. Wow, eight one. I, I thought do. it was just ale eight. The so the whole the whole name of the soda is ale eight one, which is um slang on a late one, as it says on the shirt. <gasps> but every, everybody in Kentucky, everybody in Kentucky just calls it ale eight. Oh, um, okay. If you okay. don't know what that is, it is a Kentucky exclusive soda that's kind of like a cross between ginger ale and Sprite, and it is fantastic. Order it online if you don't believe me. Have a ship to your house. Good stuff. Please sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, thank you, Lubick, for the four months. Super Mario RPG. Super Mario RPG. Sonic the Hedgehog. Donkey Kong 3. Thank you. Um. Today, uh, we have sad news for everybody. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really sad day. I, I, I didn't get dressed up for this, but I probably should have. Yeah. Uh, we should have worn black suits. Yes. Uh, Mario will be dying tomorrow. Yes. Yes. At the time of recording uh, this, he will be yeah. uh, He will be no longer with us. Tomorrow, March 31st, is the last day any of us will be able to enjoy anything Super Mario related because Nintendo is taking him um out back and putting two slugs in his head yes uh we're, we're not sure why this is necessary we're not sure yeah. uh i mean we know the cause of death it will be two slugs to the back of his head yeah but we are not sure exactly why he needs to be put out of his misery he seemed to have been living a full healthy happy life yeah out there in the mushroom kingdom doing backflips wahoo yah yahis and and whippy whippies yeah. Uh, but uh, Nintendo feels it's necessary to do so. So, uh, we're sorry to say we will no longer be enjoying any Mario from this point on. Mm -hmm. The real story is Nintendo <laughs> is getting rid of a lot of Mario things tomorrow for some reason. Yeah, they're, they're just taking them down. Um, not just taking them down. If there was a physical product, um, they are no longer going to be selling them in store. They're going uh, to the to the uh, ET for the Atari landfill. Yeah. So, what we're losing is Super Mario 3D All Stars. You cannot, you will not be able after March 31st, presumably at 11:59 p.m. Yes. Uh, after that, you will no longer be able to download a, a purchase and download a digital version of that game. You you can if you already purchased it. I, I think you yeah. can continue to download the digital version. Yeah, I want, if you purchased it already, you can continue to download it if necessary. But if you've been waiting to buy it, this is your absolute last chance to get it. And if you're listening to the archive version of this, you can't get it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can still find it in stores, maybe if they have stock. Um, physical stores physical stores yeah, yeah yes if they have yeah. stock but they're not going to be restocking stores at all yeah they're going to be crushing right. them all into a landfill somewhere yeah um super mario Bros. 35 which is a phenomenal game i like very it's much play right. it while you can it is a free game if you have nintendo switch online you will no longer be able to play it after uh tomorrow yeah. i don't know exactly what time that is going down because i don't know if it's uh japan if it's japan time that means i think 9 a.m tomorrow yeah so uh play it now if you're watch watching this live um super mario brothers game and watch will no longer <laughs> be available 
uh for purchase in stores and i mean good luck you probably is it yeah that that was hard to get this whole time so i'm trying to see if it's even on amazon right now okay i'm getting legal watches super mario 3d all-stars is not on amazon but you can still get digital codes for it on amazon Yo, uh, the Game & Watch is on Amazon, and it's six. Oh, wow. It's fifty seven forty nine. What did it retail for? More than that. No, it wasn't more than that. Oh, $50. $50. Okay, yeah. So you can get it for $7.49 more than yeah. what it cost. And I think this is European. I don't know. Yeah, but that's the Peggy. Yeah, buy it. Right. Oh, here's a. Oh no, you can you can legit get. You can legit get a, a f- it for fifty bucks. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Get it, get it now. It might not be there tomorrow. Yeah. Should I just buy another one? Why not? Give it away for free. No, Do this is content. gonna this is gonna sit in the box and rot forever. <laughs> I'm gonna buy it. Fuck it, dude. Do it. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna buy it right now. Uh, what else? Will, do you have the thing open? I'm busy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Super, Super Mario Maker's online services will be terminated. This is specifically Super Mario Maker 1 on the Wii U. So all you Super Mario Maker 2 players, um, you're fine. This is only referring to the original uh, Super Mario Maker. Um, so that said, now you have an excuse to box up your Wii U and never play it again. I want to go back and play it, but I don't think I will because it is at our parents' house and I yeah. don't want to set up the Wii U. Yeah. Uh, it would have been nice to have got, gone back and played some stuff before those yeah. services closed. But also, we don't know exactly when they're closing. It could be 9 yes. a.m. tomorrow. It could be 11.59 p.m. tomorrow. We don't know. I, I uh, put I put an affiliate link in the chat to the game and watch if you would like to purchase it for the last time, uh, and it would help us out too. Yes. Uh, and lastly, Netflix will be taking down the Super Mario Brothers three cartoon from uh, their <laughs> streaming service. Look, I mean, normally Netflix takes things down all the time. It's it's not uncommon. But the fact that a Super Mario Brothers cartoon will be leaving Netflix at the same time as all these other Mario things are disappearing, that is sus, as the kids say. It is. That is sus. Yeah. It's really weird. It's, yeah. I, I mean, all right. So this is the end of the fiscal year for, uh, for you know, businesses. Yeah. Nintendo really they're always they really care about the fiscal year for some reason whatever they're doing their little uh their little uh quarterly reports or whatever or when they have new announcements or when they have uh when they're talking about sales numbers they're always talking about the fiscal year and what's to come in the next fiscal year so march 31st is the end of this fiscal year uh we have no idea what they have in store for the next fiscal year they could decide to just close up shop (laughs) and just call it a day call it a century whatever um i don't know i thought i muted the freaking alerts um so yeah, it it, it is it, it's it's not weird that they're tying so much to the fiscal year, but it is weird that it's specifically Mario stuff, <laughs> and it's weird that they're d- removing a lot of Mario stuff. The only explanation that we have uh, was from an interview with Doug Bowser that uh, Polygon conducted in December of last year, and all he said when they asked why is why is Nintendo sunsetting all of this stuff on March 31st? He said, I think I will use a simple word, cel- celebration. <laughs> this is a celebration of Mario's 35th anniversary. We wanted to celebrate it in a unique and different way. And we've done that through games like Super Mario, Bro- Super Mario 3D All-Stars, or we're doing that through future releases such as Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. 
Uh, nowhere does it say specifically why. He said, all he says is at this point, the decision was really made around the celebration feature and aspect. I cannot speak to plans beyond the end of March. <laughs> We're shooting Mario in the back of the head at a <laughs> celebration. Yeah, it's a celebration. Yay, of Mario. The fact that there will be no more Mario. <laughs> Wh whoopee yahoo <laughs> I, I also want to say that when i uh when i googled to try to find that article one of the top hits was a youtube video that says the title is doug bowser is definitely no reggie fils <laughs> <laughs> holy shit um uh... mako fox in the chat also reminds me no more fire emblem fire emblem is oh, also right. getting shot in the back of the head so I forgot what the name of it was, but it, it was the it was the, a, the first time the original Fire Emblem game from the Famicom back in the eighties was being ported over to the U.S. It's uh, completely translated in English. Um, you can download it on the Switch for like five bucks, or there was a physical copy available. Uh, and after tomorrow, yo, fuck you, Fire Emblem. We're not <laughs> celebrating you anymore. Uh, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. That's that's what it was called. Right. Uh, I'm playing the trailer on, on screen right now. Uh, there's also the limited edition version of this game that, that, that they were selling physically. Yeah, that was the physical version, yeah. Uh, that you will no longer be able to get. But you... Yeah. Yeah, you also can't get the digital version. Right. This article doesn't say... Oh, it says the game will be priced at five ninety nine and yeah. will be available until the 31st of March. Uh, the special edition will also be released as suggested retail price of 50 bones. Um, and then, yeah, you I, also cannot get this anymore. This was weird because rather than making it a part of um, the NES collection on Switch Online, which is what they were they had done with uh, you know import titles and previously unreleased stuff, they're selling this separately outside of switch online yeah that's another weird thing it's another weird thing yeah. nintendo's doing i don't know why they couldn't just plop this into the nintendo switch online especially if it's gonna be uh a, a special edition thing I what th I what's think, the celebration I because, here i think this was originally gonna come out on the wii u um and it was made with uh the wii u's nes emulator in mind right um so then rather than convert it to the switch online nes emulator they just put it in its own special container. How and hard would this. that have been? It's an NES emulator. I know. If that's the easiest thing to emulate, I just I don't think Nintendo really wanted to. <laughs> uh the celebration here is that it's been 30 years. That's what that's yeah. to answer my own question that I posed to nobody. Um yeah. I mean it it probably took a lot of work to translate all of this and to get it to work. So I understand they want a couple bucks out of it, but they already yeah. make so much money with Nintendo Switch Online. Like, mm -hmm. was this really necessary? And is it necessary to remove it from the store in in, in a day? That that's that's just what baffles me is the fact that they're they're removing it from the store completely like you, you as far as we know you will never be able to buy these again on switch and that, there is no good reason for it that's weird it's very strange yeah. all of these things are very strange i yeah. understand things like the game of watch it's a limited console thing they did the same thing with the nes classic they did the same thing with the super nintendo classic i kind of understand um even though those i mean they should have had those available for a long time uh, and they didn't really. Um, a lot of the digital stuff I just don't get. Like Super Mario 35, you made the game. You developed the yeah. game. Let us have yeah. the game. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. Fire Emblem, that's not even an online game. Let yeah. us... You made it already. What's the harm in leaving it up on the on the storefront? It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Like, why go... Why go through the trouble of developing specifically this tech to emulate your old games on the Switch only for it to just disappear? You yeah. know, you're you're pretty much erasing all that hard work that your developers put into making these games. It's very it, it uh, I, I I don't know. I, I I'm a, yeah. I'm 
only a little sad about Super Mario Maker going offline. Yeah. I'd imagine people would think that I'm very upset about that. Well, you have Mario Maker 2. Yeah, exactly. I have Mario Maker 2. I mean, I'll be honest. I think I like Mario Maker 1 more than I like Mario Maker 2. Really? I think there's a lot about 1 that I liked more. I'm sorry. I'm trying to adjust the focus on my camera. It's all <laughs> it's all out of whack. Uh, well, I'd imagine 1 was easier to control with the touchscreen than... I mean, in terms of making levels. Yeah, but I don't really make then, levels. Uh, that's true, yeah. Here, here's why Mario Maker 1 is better than Mario Maker 2, okay? You got the mystery mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So so you automatically have all of these skins. Basically, every, and they're all taken from Smash Brothers. So you have all of these characters you can now throw into Mario Maker and build levels around these different characters. Um, you have the 100 Mario Challenge which had an end point you could beat right. the 100 mario challenge and it felt good with the endless challenge there is no end goal it feels <laughs> like you, there, you don't accomplish anything yeah um what else uh those are those are my two main things uh, i don't really like the 3d world play style that much Previously, in the first Mario Maker, I didn't really like the new Super Mario Bros. playstyle that much. Now, I love the new Super Mario Bros. playstyle, <laughs> and I don't like the 3D World playstyle. Um, so, uh, th that I feel like they removed a lot that we originally had instead of adding stuff that was, like, nice. Ever si since the game launched, they gave a lot of great updates to Mario Maker 2. You got the, yeah. the, the, um, you got the Super Mario Brothers 2 power-up. You got the, uh, the, the, the Link power-up. Um, so that, that changes the way you play the game. Uh, you have the Super Worlds, which might be the best addition. If that came out when Mario Maker first came out, Mario Maker 2 would have been a much better deal if, if they added Super Worlds right from the jump slopes yeah that's really not that big of a deal people made a huge deal about slopes yeah it's it's, it's fine i completely once i picked up mario maker 2 i forgot about slopes <laughs> people like to do the butt slide downhills yeah i i mean in the mario 3 play style like i don't really yeah. need it in anything else multiplayer oh yes uh natter potator brings up multiplayer Multiplayer is great in Mario Maker 2. It, unfortunately, I can't recommend it to anybody because it runs like absolute ass. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. I'm glad it's there because I enjoy it, but uh, it's, it's, really hard to, it's really hard to recommend to anybody. Yeah. Uh, because you have to suffer through how, how bad the online is. Um, that being said, if you have any levels in the original Super Mario Maker... You should play them right now, or at least download them, uh, because you will no longer be able to play games online on Mario Maker 2, which is the whole point of the game. I mean, on Mario Maker 1. You'll no longer be able to play levels online on Mario Maker 1, which is the whole point of the game. Let me make sure that I got that right. The ability to upload courses will no longer work. Sup the Super Mario Bookmark website will uh, will no longer work. Another great thing that the first game had that the second game didn't, the bookmark website. There was a website yeah. where you can bookmark levels. They would automatically go into a queue so that you can play them on your Wii U. <clears throat> we don't have any any such thing on, on the Switch, which is ridiculous because we have the Switch Online app that has been rendered useless. Yeah. Updating the ranking of liked courses, looking up your bookmark cor courses. So does that mean you can still play courses online? Because it says um, you can't upload them. Oh, you no, can't. I don't think you, you can't can. download yeah. the game at all. So if you have it digitally, yeah. you got to make sure you have it. Yeah. Um. No longer be possible to upload courses, and on the same day, the Mario Maker Book Bar website it will close. Nintendo says that it will. It will still be possible to play courses uploaded from, but before the the service disc. Oh, so you could still play courses yeah so never mind so scratch that Ma a mario maker one is still alive and kicking <laughs> just just but, if but barely if, 
if you have courses that you never uploaded, you got to finish making them tonight. That's it, really. Yeah. Otherwise, Mario Maker 2, pretty much exactly the same as Mario Maker 1. Yeah. Um... I'm. I mean, I'm more upset about Mario 35. I wish they did a lot more with that game. Uh, instead, uh, they're they're shooting in the back of the head tonight. Yeah, it's really weird that you know that specifically because that should have just been a, the perfect companion to Tetris 99, and it, it's not. I, I hope it blossoms into something new. I hope we get like an actual yeah. Mario Royale out of it. Um. I suspect Mario 3D All Stars will turn into a, uh, a piecemeal situation. You'll be able to buy the games individually, um, but we have yet to see. Who knows? Nintendo is weird, and they could just remove the ability to purchase it entirely. Yeah. Uh, should I read this Nintendo Life article talking about there might be a bright side to Mario's March 31st <laughs> doomsday after all? Uh. I guess any bright side that you can think of. And anyone who's read the biblical story of Cain and Abel or Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat or just watched the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical knows what kind of knows what happens when one child is given all the attention at the expense of others. He gets murdered and or sold to strangers. I skipped a lot in this article. Um <laughs> now that's not going to happen to Mario, mostly because there's a bit of uh, uh, there's a harsh a bit that's a bit harsh for family friendly company but honestly the Mar march 31st shutdown might allow other games to get a little bit more of the attention too i won't argue that it isn't a little anti-consumer to almost literally snatch games out of the hands but uh but there's a difference between a limited time only and we decided to delete this because screw you, that's why. <laughs> Nintendo failed in its messaging more than anything, making limited time only seem like it was a forever sort of thing. That's on Nintendo, really, but it's backfired pretty badly. Uh, and it's backfired pretty badly, but it can't take, but it can't take it back now. Uh, the main issue with a year-long anniversary is that it's only a year long. It has to be, it has to have an end, and that end is going to disappoint people. The servers for Mario 35 were presumably set up only for a year. Those things are costly and time-consuming to run, after all, but those servers might be freed up for something else as a result. Maybe something for Zelda's 35th, which starts in July, but let's not get our hopes up. Uh... The the whole point of this article is that uh, this is Mar this is Zelda's thirty fifth anniversary now, right? So Mario's thirty fifth anniversary is over. However, I will m remind everyone that Mario's thirty fifth anniversary didn't start until what, like freaking July, when Paper Mario came out, something like that. Yeah, it was the year of Mario, but we only got a little bit and it, and it came at, it, in like September. September was the direct. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, no, I don't, I don't agree with, with that at all. I'm, I'm very disappointed in, in, ha in the, the 30th, 35th September, anniversary of Mara. According to Wikipedia, it's September 3rd, which was when the direct was to March 31st. So is, that's is, less than a year. Is the year of Mario. Wow. October, November, December, I mean, uh, January, February, March. That's the half year. Honestly, I understand. That's the half year of Mario. They they had problems because of COVID. They they couldn't work on everything that right. they wanted to. I'm sure the 35th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers is going to be a much bigger deal than it ended up being. Yeah, but it's still for, uh, such a short window to have these games available. Yeah, that, I feel like they had to rush a lot out. Um, we still got Bowser's Fury out of it. We still got the Super Mario Red Edition Switch, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so we got a lot out of it. Uh, I don't really care much for Zelda. <laughs> I wish I got more <laughs> Mario. Um, Apparently, you can still buy Super Mario 3D All-Stars from Target, either at the store or deliver it to you. Well, you have until tomorrow, probably. Yeah. Hurry. 
This website says people expect a lot from Nintendo, and although I don't feel sorry for the multi-billion dollar company, it'll be fine, I'm sure. I do feel a pang of sympathy for Nintendo trying to meet expectations sometimes. It gave people a free game, and you still need a Nintendo Switch Online account, of course, as a celebration, and people complained that it wasn't free forever. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> They re-release the three classic Mario games for a fraction of the original price of each. All right, buddy. A very un-Nintendo thing to do. And people were unhappy that it was only on sale for a year. Super Mario Maker's online service being terminated makes sense for a game that's almost six years old on a console that didn't sell well. The mistake here is making all of these happen on the same day. I agree with that. That's just not a great look. Uh, and then there's a picture of the year of Luigi for some reason. Yeah. I know it's silly to have hopes, but I do think, I do like to think that Nintendo has a plan. I don't think it is quite as evil as this whole March 31st thing has been made to seem, though I do think it comes across as a little unfriendly. I can imagine that it seems like a fitting end to a year that was all about Mario, and it got plenty of attention and press for the games too. But isn't it about time that Mario <laughs> died and then that died is crossed <laughs> out? Gave someone else the microphone anyway? I hope that Nintendo's plan for the 1st of April onwards involves showing at least a fraction of the same love it's neglected to its neglected games. On the note of the year of Luigi, that was Nintendo's worst year? <laughs> you know, in like... I yeah. think it's life. <laughs> that was like the height of the Wii U era, too. It was a very bad year for Nintendo that year. Yeah. Not to say that the games that got like the like the Luigi game that we got. Yeah, the, out of ga it, the games were good, but it just was unfortunate that it was the Wii yeah. era. I mean the Wii U era. Um So yeah, but basically it, we can assume that the end of the fiscal year will start the the year of Zelda. Yeah, is is what we we can assume. Mm -hmm. Um, we're gonna get Skyward Sword. Uh, we got those Joy Cons. Uh, maybe I mean I'm sure they had plans for Breath of the Wild two to have something this year. But uh, I would be surprised if they uh, went through with it. I think at the earliest we would see it next March. Yeah. Uh, because that'll still be within this fiscal year. But I also think we're going to be seeing some sort of new Switch situation this year. So, Well, I mean, there are all those rumors that there's going to be a 4K Switch with better battery oh, life really? and OLED screen, an OLED 7-inch screen. I don't know if you've heard about it. I don't think I have. I don't know. What oh, you haven't about. heard? You haven't heard the rumors about a new switch that runs on a new Tegra chip that uses NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling technology? It uses AI, Bob. I've never to heard upscale of that. images to 4K. Who's Al? He's, he's, he's their guy. <laughs> he's their guy. So get 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 all the Mario you can right now. Yes. Uh, he's dead. He's as good as dead. Sorry, all we can hope is that they, they used. Um, this, whatever they learned from making these games um, towards something else. Like maybe this does mean we'll get uh, N64 and GameCube games on the Switch going forward. Maybe maybe this means, uh, you know, the Metroid Prime trilogy will finally come to Switch or, you know, Lost Classics like F-Zero GX or Eternal Darkness or things like that. I'll be so. surprised if we don't get Wind Waker or some... Or some, some... Well... The thing, the thing that's weird is we're getting Skyward Sword HD, but uh, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD were on the Wii U, and those are like two of like what five games that Nintendo hasn't ported over to the Switch in some way. Right. Maybe we'll get a similar collection that we got for uh, maybe yeah for Mario. I mean that would sell a lot. Yeah. And they already have the emulation. Yeah. So why not? And you know we've seen porting from Switch from Wii U to Switch doesn't seem to be that big of a deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Wii U to Switch is nothing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's that. That's all I got to say about Mario dying. Yeah. Um, we got a lot of notifications. You guys did a lot of things while we were talking. 
Uh, we got Luen Mac with or Mag with two months. One more month with the Wolf Bros. How you doing? Good to see you. Hey. Nader Potato with one. Here we gifted a sub to Robo. Thank you very much. We got Smalls out with four months. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I don't know the song. <laughs> Rip Mario. Rip. Kate yeah. with 100 bits. Uh, my theory is they're going to kill him and have him be reborn like they did to Mr. Peanut. <laughs> Next game is <laughs> Baby Reincarnated Mario. Uh, so oh, basically God. Yoshi's Island 2. Uh, everyone's gonna hate that Super Mario World 3 yeah uh, we got oh we got Mr. McGassian with five gifted subs thank wow. you very Big much man. I appreciate that uh, we got Knucker with nine months Bob when will you turn your Xbox into an emulation machine I got a lot to do dude there's so many videos to make uh, I, I I need a week and no video that week. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. So never. <laughs> so never. Britwa with yeah. four bits, thank you. And we got Gimme the Chips, who gifted five sub as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. that. Was very nice. And Lucas FMS with two months. Hello, Internet Dads. Hello, son. Hello. If you are a new subscriber here, if you were even gifted a sub, uh, go to discord.gg slash wolfden. You can link your Twitch account to your Discord and you can get into the special fancy supporter only. Oh, you can't see it. Supporter only <laughs> Discord. Ooh, the one for supporters. Mm -hmm. I post videos a few hours early there. So uh, you can comment first on the YouTube videos. Uh, but only if you're a supporter here on Twitch. Anyway, thank you for all your support. I didn't organize these stories today. But yeah, I, I just threw them in there randomly. Um, I think we're, I think we're yeah. good to talk about Reggie leaving GameStop. Yeah. I mean, the rest are really like, there's just a lot of like, uh, like, it's yeah there's wasn't like a big news week no it's a lot really. of little and, things and, and he, yeah but uh, uh reggie fils and may friend to the children everywhere is stepping down from gamestop board of directors role uh, okay uh, reggie is stepping down from his role at gamestop the former nintendo america president is retiring from his position at gamestop only 12 months after starting it gamestop's future is not fully known but the former nintendo leader is still still has his hands in many different areas. Last March, fils may joined GameStop's board of directors with his breadth of video game knowledge. Coming from years of Nintendo experience, fils may brought a unique uh, perspective to the table. However, just barely a year later, he is retiring from the position. It should be noted that Reggie is not the only person who is leaving the board of directors. Um, I don't know who any of these people are. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it was about like nine people are also leaving um, their positions at GameStop, according to a recent GameStop news report, GameStop is also notes that eight member that the eight members leaving, sorry, it's eight, um, has nothing to do with a disagreement in relation to operations, policies, or practice. It would seem that this is simply a change in direction for the company. In early March, GameStop was working on a change to its sales strategy. This may be part of that decision. Uh, and it will be if they go on. It'll be interesting to monitor GameStop after the Reddit stock fiasco. The situation is rather unprecedented. While the company was able to benefit to a degree, it's hard to count on anything moving forward. GameStop will likely attempt to create a solid business strategy moving forward and not rely on a very fluid and potentially unstable stock situation. I would just like to say that I think I know why GameStop, why Reggie is leaving GameStop. Why is that, Will? Because he's seen my emails to them, and they are not nice. Mm -hmm. They are not nice at all. So for those of you who don't know, back in January, they were having a big action figure sale. And I bought myself um, all four Ghostbusters from the recent uh, Hasbro Ghostbusters Plasma series. I They're don't very know nice this. Figures. I don't know the story. You don't know the story at all? No. Nope. So they're having a sale. Those are like $20 figures. Um, but I got the whole set for like uh, 
54 which is a, which is a pretty good discount okay all things considered they've so far shipped me one figure i have egon they oh. charged me they charged me for three figures and okay. and one of them uh peter is on back order which he was not on back order at the time i purchased it well that doesn't make any sense it, it gets worse so i remember i ordered these back in january and i've gotten one figure so far i emailed them a month after uh, you know, in february a month after not getting anything they didn't respond they just sent a generic uh email saying oh you know due to covid delays there might be delays in shipping and whatnot so on the two month anniversary of this purchase, I finally spoke to somebody using their chat bot feature. Uh, the two, the two other figures I was charged for, uh, Winston and Ray were lost in shipping. What did they, they use to ship? ship FedEx? Oh, there you go. FedEx you know, a, a major shipping company. FedEx sucks. It's the worst one. It's worse than DHL. <laughs> There, no, there are, there are worse. There's a company called LaserShip that just refuses to just deliver to our house. Oh, that's isn't that what Amazon uses? No, that's what the Gap and like oh. uh, a lot of like retail stores use. <sighs> Ew. Amazon has their own thing. Anyway, so they those were lost in shipping, and they said, "Oh, we'll just ship you out new ones, and we don't know when the back order ones coming in." I get an email the next day saying that one of those figures is now on its way, but if I look on GameStop's website, it says it was returned and I did not get my money back. How does that make any sense? I don't know, Bob. You tell me. <laughs> Today, I got an email saying that uh, Winston is on his way, but it won't let me check the tracking of that figure. If I go to GameStop's website directly, it just says it, that he was returned. And I don't know when the final two... Ghostbusters are going to come. I don't even know when Winston is going to come because they won't let me check. And these are for figures that I could get literally anywhere else. Target still sells them. Walmart still sells them. Amazon still sells them. I bought them from GameStop because they were the best price on those figures. But I'm now, you know, two months in and I still don't have my toys and their customer service has just been atrocious. Well, now you know. not telling me what I want to hear, not giving me a straight answer. So this will be the last time I buy anything from GameStop for a very long time, uh, especially uh, an online order. Now you know uh, you why that the, the, they were so cheap. Mm -hmm. You would think with all the, you know, the good publicity and the money they got from the stock market stuff and whatnot, they would turn over new leaf. But no, they're just like, nah, this Will Wolf guy, fuck him. I mean, GameStop. I mean, the whole, there was a whole stock fiasco. They got a, they got a whole lot of money from. Well, not. I mean, I don't really know how it works. Yeah. I, I I think they have to try to prove that they have a business plan to keep those stock prices up. Um, but there's that would be an impossibility for for GameStop. And I suspect that a lot of these board members have left because that's their job is to yeah. come up with the business plan for this failing company that all of a sudden got all of this money. Yeah. It's a it's a recipe for disaster. There's like no way that they could that they could do that. And yeah. Reggie has got better things to do. Yeah. Or uh, maybe Reggie saw uh Will's uh yeah diatribes on twitter or something and uh, uh and couldn't handle it kiki missy says will just do a chargeback on your credit card you might get lucky and get them anyway i was this close to doing so i was this close to doing so but then they sent me the email saying winston's on his way so i'm gonna give him i'm gonna give him another month and we'll see where we're at yeah you'll have to threaten a chargeback uh yeah because uh they usually listen when you threaten a chargeback yeah well, I mean, you have no other choice. They, they didn't give you the product for whatever reason. <laughs> What's unfortunate is you can't charge back half of it. You probably have to just charge back the whole thing. I know. Well, I don't plan on returning what I have, so. Yeah, no, I mean, you it's, you deserve it. Yeah, I deserve my Ghostbusters. <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous, though. I've never had uh, 
I don't want to say never. I'm sure I've had problems with GameStop before, but I, I mean, haven't I've had, had problems it. with. I haven't I've had, had problems like with other, you know, deliveries and whatnot. I had a problem with Target and a couple of figures there, but I mean, it's never been this ridiculous, right? Um, but anyway, it, this article said that there's probably going to be a change in business strategy going forward. Uh, I mean, I would yeah. imagine that they have to change the business strategy because of this whole stock fiasco. Also, because they're a failing company and they can't just keep relying on the sale of used games because a lot of stuff's going digital now. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the things that they were doing to combat being all digital, like the world becoming all digital, was going for toy sales. Yes. They bought ThinkGeek. They wanted to get away from video, not away from video games, but they wanted to supplement their loss in revenue from digital sales. And they wanted to do, they wanted to supplement it with uh, physical toys and like and yeah. you know like adult collectors items and stuff and here you have will over here <laughs> hello buying toys and getting effed by gamestop so um reggie's like a friggin' board member on like a million different companies so i, I yeah. think he's doing just fine one question i have it looks like he was photoshopped into this picture and also stretched out. <laughs> right? I think, yeah. Something's up here. That is a very, unless that's an old picture. He was like chubbier, but I don't know. I mean, this was uh, uh, 2017, it looks like, because of the yeah. Mario Odyssey amiibos and the 2DSs. Still. He looks yeah. he looks like he's stretched out. It's weird. Anyway, Chris Toledo, thank you for the two undo bits. How now every time I hear Bob say the full name of a Mario game, I fully expect him to sing it like he's been doing. I think I have PTSD, <laughs> not like this. <laughs> Sorry about it. Uh how come no one talks about the president of nintendo being married to the mayor of dc what what because we don't know that <laughs> of washington dc is that a real thing her name is muriel bowser apparently oh my god that's a terrible name for a politician Yes. Can confirm not photoshopped. Found other pictures close from slightly different angles. Oh my god. Uh, it, I don't think they're no because Muriel Bowser is not married. There seems to be no relation. They just both have a very unfortunate last name. Oh. Very strange. Uh, that's a fitting name for a politician, Bob. I mean, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, oh, Will, here's a topic for you. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. Um, I've been playing Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, okay. I so I I played the Monster Hunter that was on the 3DS. Because when I bought the new 3DS, I got the Monster Hunter version because it looked cool. Right. And it came with Monster Hunter. So I was like, I'll play this game. I didn't understand it. I thought it was so dumb. Especially the 3DS one. Because mm. they 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 decided they decided to leave in in Monster Hunter. It's an open world in the 3DS Monster Hunter. It's an open world. However, each section of that world has to load and there's loading times between each section. <laughs> and they said that this was a staple of Monster Hunter and they didn't want to get rid of it. Meanwhile, they could have totally gotten rid of it for the 3DS version. Yeah. There's a lot of weird, stupid mechanics like that that didn't make any sense. It felt like old game design and they left it in because right. that's just Monster Hunter. But for whatever reason, I kept playing that stupid game. It just kept bringing me back in. Right, right. 
After that, I played Monster Hunter World years later. Monster Hunter World was the one that came out on PS4 and Xbox yes. One. Um, Played that more than I expected to. That game was light years better, but also had a lot of weird mechanics that didn't <laughs> feel like they were, you know, like like a lot of weird design choices that, that I felt yeah. like could have been way more streamlined. Um, but for whatever reason, the game kept making me want to play it. I would play the game have a terrible time. And then once I stopped playing the game, I would be thinking about playing the game more and I'd want to play the game more. Then I would play the game more and then I would hate the game. <laughs> and it, it was like an abusive relationship. It just kept happening over and over again. Now, same thing's happening with Monster Hunter Rise. I'm playing the game. I mean, I'm having a better time playing it because I'm ignoring right. all of the bullshit that's in the game. There's a lot of bullshit. <laughs> there's a lot of menus that are completely unnecessary it could be right. way more streamlined for example will uh the main menu when you first start to, to even start a game thumbstick don't work need to use the really? d-pad yes really d-pad is In necessary 2021. yes you need to use the d-pad you cannot use the thumbstick i thought my controller was broken when yeah. i when i first started it up um, Ghost Man, Ghost Mam says, "Nope, you just suck at it." Okay, I suck at using the thumbstick. <laughs> um, there is an option to change that apparently, but I didn't know that until I saw somebody tweet about it yesterday. Um, so that's just one example of the weird shit that you have to do. Another thing yeah. is like potions are tied to uh, like potions and items and stuff are tied to, to to navigate through your items. You need to hold, I think, L and press uh, Y and A to go left and right in the item menu. Wait, wait, say that again. So in order to in order to navigate through your items. You need to right. hold L and then it and then it brings up like kind of like a wheel of your items. Okay. And then Y is to go left and A is to go right. If you touch the D-pad, it will bring up a shortcut menu that has nothing on it because you haven't set up the shortcuts yet. So And you have to do you, this in the middle of fighting a giant monster. <laughs> Do, I imagine you move with the analog stick. Correct. Okay, so if you have the wheel up and you try to use the analog stick, do you just move? Yes. Okay. Oh, that still doesn't make it any better. Right. That actually kind of makes it worse. Sushi Solar says, I mean, Bob did st skip all the tutorials. I did. There was so much tutorial. Oh, There's God. so much text they want you to read. They want you to study a textbook before you play the game. So first of all, fuck that. Already not doing that. Second of yeah. all, the game should teach you how to play it through yeah. playing the game. And that's how games should work. This is why I hate when people tell me when I tell people I don't didn't like Ready Player One and they said, did you read the book? And I'm like, no, because I don't feel it's necessary to do homework right. before I go to watch a movie. Right. Like it, the experience you're about to have should be enough, you know, not any like ancillary work. I don't want to have to have, you know, read 40, 40 issues of a comic book series or like you know, the, the three uh, novels that the original author made or like the TV show, whatnot, like it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. The experience you are about to have should be enough. Otherwise it's probably going to be a bad experience. Yes. Yes. Um, because there's so many menus and interfaces and, and, and mechanics and things that you can do, uh, you could do something wrong for the whole game. And then somebody could be like, oh, don't, you could have just done this the whole time. Yeah. Um. So Medicine just says, Bob, you must study Nihongo until you can think in Japanese. <laughs> Only then will you grasp Monster Hunter fully. I feel like it is very like, uh, like a uh, Asian to like, uh, <laughs> to like learn through reading or studying or something, you know? And it's yeah, very I mean, ignorant American to have to, experience it you know yeah 
I, uh, I feel like a lot of like JRPGs though are very text heavy. That I mean, I guess that just is their style and technical. And there's like a million different ways you could do things. Yeah, because that's yeah. you know that's what they like. And I, I mean, a lot of people here like that too, and that's totally fine. You yeah. can like it. Yeah, I think. A lot of bad game design in, in Monster Hunter. I, I I know it's it's like a thing for Monster Hunter. All these things have been in Monster Hunter for years. Doesn't mean it's good. Doesn't mean it, <laughs> it it's still necessary to be like that. I, I so much could be streamlined. I also know that you know a big thing in Monster Hunter is you know getting getting somebody who's good at Monster Hunter already to like help guide you through the game. That's what I do. You know, like every time I see like a new Monster Hunter game come out there's always an article about like this is my first time playing monster hunter so i got my friend who's like an expert at monster hunter to help me get through the game and now i'm i'm as good as him as the best game in the world what what not it, it kind of feels like wow in that respect except wow yeah. i feel like would be easier to understand um yeah i i have ian who's who was helping me through it and you know what honestly it's just fun to play with other people because it turns into like a podcast when you get yeah. into the actual fighting the monster you're just mashing two buttons really the whole time <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna ask how's the actual combat so it's, it's just two button it's fine i mean there's combos and everything and it's way more technical than that you can like do all of these different things but honestly 90 percent of it is you're mashing two buttons mm -hmm. so here's the other thing will when I was playing the one for the 3DS, every time I said I didn't like it, somebody would say, "Oh, you're that's because you're using the the katana. You're not <laughs> you're not using you got to use the long sword or something." No. There are like 12 different weapons or something, and each weapon has entirely different mechanics. Yeah. That you need to learn. And that of course I'm not going to learn through text. <laughs> <laughs> so, um so I'm I'm just using the dual swords or the dual blades or whatever, and it's fine. It, it those are those are just fine, and they're easy to understand. That is why I'm mashing basically because I'm that's the yeah. w weapon I decided to use. Um. So. It, it, again, it's got a lot of bullshit. Uh, there's a lot going on, but. Underneath all of that bullshit is a good game somewhere. <laughs> There's a lot of game design and like UX design that I don't agree with that I think could totally be streamlined. They just need to bring somebody in. I mean, it's kind of yeah. it, it's kind of like Nintendo to the extreme, even though it's a Capcom game. <laughs> Nintendo has very bad UI design. Um, they need somebody to br get brought in and say, get rid of almost all of this shit and put it all into one button or something. Monster Hunter World did a really good job of that. For whatever reason, this one kind of reverts back to like old Monster Hunter. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you, 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 you... It's hard to recommend. You should watch videos and stuff and see if it's something you can get into. It's kind of like... Yeah. The it, if if you like the RPG elements in in Skyrim and like building your armor and stuff, it's that times a thousand. Um. So I don't. Oh, uh, Bella Trixastro says, "Uh, can we still download the demo to try it?" I believe you can. So yes, I recommend downloading the demo. You you play you fight like one monster, one or two monsters. Uh, and it's a long demo. So uh, yeah, play the demo, try it out, and you can play the demo multiplayer. No, oh. they also fixed. There was an issue with the demo where if you had too many people on your friends list, uh, you uh, the frame rate was terrible. Uh, they fixed it. That doesn't happen anymore. Also, oh. the game is really good looking for a really? Switch game. It is very pretty, and it doesn't really. I mean, it runs at thirty frames a second, but it doesn't really slow down that much, especially with when there's like a, a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Um. It looks very nice and it runs very well. And the multiplayer is very good. This is the first multiplayer game on the Switch that uses a new uh, uh, connection server situation. Remember we were talking about right. that? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. It runs really, really good. So, um, technically the game, like, technically, oh, it's the, R it's the RE7 engine, apparently. On really? the Switch, yes. So technically, huh. it is designed very well. Uh, hmm. The user experience, 
leaves a lot to be desired especially in the <laughs> menus and, and, and stuff um but again underneath all the bullshit is a great game somewhere play the demo with some friends and see if you enjoy it see if it's worth spending 60 bucks on that's what i that's what i recommend <sighs> all right that was my monster hunter rant what i got out of this is if it's the re7 engine that means that re2 and re3 can come to switch yes that's all that's what i got out of it that's the most important thing i got out of it yes uh good i did i did say some things in the chat that i wanted to nader says i take it you're not a jrpg guy bob no oh, that's some weeb shit yeah wait i learned how to say that's some weeb shit in japanese <laughs> yeah well so like weeb isn't a japanese word i just learned <laughs> I think I knew that. Um, Maji day. That means you. Get, that means ah, you gotta be kidding me. Like get that yeah. shit. Get like get that shit on my face. Yeah. Ah, I lost the comment I wanted to read. I have been Never missing mind. the podcast because my alarm sounded an hour later and I just figured out it's because of the light savings time in USA. Uh, what? Z4M4, where are you Where are you at? Yeah. That you have the privilege of not having daylight savings. Yeah, because seriously, fuck that shit. <laughs> The original way I was going to say that some weep shit was Sore wa otaku no mono des, Which is like, that's some otaku stuff. But that doesn't really translate well. Yeah. Bob, have um, you used the Princess Peach shampoo yet? No, I refuse. I use hymns. Because uh, I'm, I'm losing my hair. My hair's I'm pretty tall. sure if, if you use the Princess Peach shampoo, it will reverse all the hymns... <laughs> work and it, you'll just lose it all yes Arizona doesn't have daylight savings I know it's like a fantasy land yeah. over there uh, I'm from Mexico and daylight savings time changes later than in oh what oh interesting the world's weird yeah uh next news yes Oh, wait. Chris Speaking Toledo of... gave us 200 bits. Now, every time I hear... Oh, I read that already. Never mind. Go ahead, Will. All right. Speaking of uh, good games bogged down by uh, weird design options and uh, just not working properly, Cyberpunk is still having problems, even though it had a, a massive patch. Uh, uh, hot take. Game's not designed well anyway. The <laughs> game wouldn't have been good even if it wasn't broken. That's my, that's my hot from take. What, from what I played of it, I, I could get a sense that there was a good game in there somewhere. It just it was just bogged down by so many technical issues right. that it just it rendered the experience un. You know, it, I was not able to enjoy the experience. Right. Uh, right. 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 That said, it's been a little over three months since the disastrous launch of Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt Red's highly anticipated open world game starring Keanu Reeves. During this time, the Polish studio has released a few updates for the game, including two major ones. The March 1.2 patch takes aim at everything from police AI to small but funny oversights like typos. The list of fixes <laughs> is long. But based on what many Twitch streamers and YouTubers are sharing post-patch, it seems that Cyberpunk 2077 is still looking rough. Right now, most of the top Twitch clips of the game hail from streamer Vine Sauce's recent broadcast, oh. where the personality showcases a number of remaining glitches. The most common type of glitch, which is popping up repeatedly on social media, has to do with spawning cars. When players call in a ride, the game will spawn all of the vehicles in the same place, sometimes leading to complete mayhem as cars explode against each other or the game struggles to render so many objects at once. There also appears to be a number of physics-based hijinks according to other clips from the stream. I, I want to watch his his uh his thing. Okay, should I keep reading? Uh no, I'm going to I'm going to play the audio. I don't mind doing free QA testing. Just, you know, acknowledge my achievements in helping you. 
bring the shrimp lady back online, and, uh, and I'll be happy. Oh god. He's spawning a million cars right now. Okay, so I just oh, saw a piece go flying, so that means <laughs> this hasn't been fixed entirely. Some things remain oh. unfixed. Oh! <laughs> Beautiful. That was actually even better than usual. So, so he he just spawned a million cars, and they all spawned inside of each other, and then exploded. Yes. Uh, driving in general still seems to be hit or miss. In one YouTube video uploaded by Kev Dewitt. Uh, the player throws a grenade into the distance, prompting every single NPC to step out of their car Whoa. in unison. Uh, he then looks away for a split second, and every one of those people disappears into thin air. Uh, these are but a few of the hitches highlighted in the mere four-minute video. Uh, apparently, there's a... Uh, oh, my God. This is nuts. Apparently, there's a... Uh, like. So, so I, I saw Dreamcast guy, I think, said that he really... He thinks the demo fixed... I mean, the update fixed a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's some like the 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 pedestrians are still dumb, and uh, I think cops still don't work right. Stuff like that, yeah. and, and like they disappear and reappear like like in front of your eyes. So like that sucks. But uh, supposedly it fixed a lot of weird glitches. I don't know. Right. Uh, that same footage also shows that the police aren't quite up to par yet. Sometimes they kill oh, the player instantly. Sometimes they despawn mid-chase. And other times they completely ignore crimes happening right in front of them. <laughs> Similarly, other clips floating around at the moment don't paint the game in a very positive light. Simple things like aiming down the sights are still not working correctly according to players trying to uh, trying the patch. Uh, on other places like Reddit and Twitter, there are reports of the game loading slower than before, though performance appears to vary depending on platform. This far in, though, some are questioning whether or not it's worth coming back to a game that could still be considered broken or whether they should just get a refund. As of this writing, Cyberpunk 2077 is still not available on the PlayStation Store after being delisted in late 2020. <laughs> uh, I did see it in Target the other day, actually, for the PS4. That's beside the point. In January, CD Projekt Red laid out a roadmap for Cyberpunk 2077, which specified, uh, which specifically numbered two patches for the game. Uh, while the troubled RPG will continue to get unspecified tweaks and fixes throughout the year, based on the roadmap, the developer will also start to pivot towards developing free DLC and next-gen upgrades. Hopefully, the upcoming changes do more than put a Band-Aid on the experience, which to date has sold millions of copies despite controversy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's interesting that it's not on the PlayStation Store still. I mean, I'd imagine that so, Sony is Sony got this update, tried it out, and was like, not yet. I I saw I saw something where CD Projekt Red said they're close to getting it back on the PlayStation Store, but it's in Sony's hands, and I it just it doesn't look like that's gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> I mean, it's difficult now because this game is under such a microscope. Like, everybody's yeah. really nitpicking the hell out of it to try to find problems. So, like, it's going to take a yeah. long time for the, for the public to decide it's ready. But again, I'll say it again. I don't think this game was going to be good anyway. Because uh, playing just a little bit of it, it's got some, it's got some weird design choices. And it's it's not just the fact that there's glitches and stuff. Like like I think that it's I think it's I think it's just a it's just a poorly designed game. It does have a little lot of weird design quirks. I mean, like you can like you can get like you can eat food in the game, but you don't have a, a hunger meter, so it's it's really doesn't serve a purpose. Um, and there are a lot of situations where like you get a lot of money to buy things, but a lot of things you can buy, you just get in the world for free. Mm -hmm. So like there, there's a weird balance there. Uh, the mission layout, I don't particularly like, cause yeah. it sort of like forces you into doing the main quests and you completely forget about all the side quests that you kind of have to do in order to like, you know, play the game properly. Like I can't, like when I last uh, stopped playing the game, I couldn't spawn a car because I missed the side quest where I had to go and get my first car back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's to be able to. 
that's my main explain, problem with yeah. it is that you don't know what you're doing the whole time like i just yeah. want to beeline through the main quest and there's just no telling what's happening the game will just be like go there and then you just follow mm. that and then you could just be doing side quests for the whole life and not realize it yeah um yeah uh, there were one uh, there was one point where i I just couldn't open a door i just couldn't but yeah it wasn't glitched i couldn't figure it out and it was just a door that you just go up yeah. to open i couldn't find the door <laughs> <laughs> i just couldn't i couldn't fi i think i streamed it i just could yeah. not figure it out for the life of me <laughs> uh, i was trying all these different things I was like going around like trying to get i don't know um yeah that i think i think there's I mean that's but that's also like uh, uh like I say it was designed poorly but like like you said you sh there's no you can eat but there's no hunger meter that's yeah. probably something that was intended to be put in the game but then wasn't there so like all yeah. of these design choices that I think were bad could have probably been fixed if they gave this game a little more time yeah um some of those things it, it seems like you know they spent a lot of money and they had a lot of people work on this game so um one of the programmers had to look busy so he programmed in a, a you know the ability to eat food but forgot to put in the hunger meter right uh, Bang bango says were you a witcher 3 fan bob uh no but i did like the very little bit that i played of the witcher 3 yeah i i, I respected it I, I know that uh cd project red is now completely revamping the way they market games um and they're doing everything they can to try to get this fixed they there was uh even talk that they might cancel the plan multiplayer for this game just to focus their attention on getting this game up and running properly absolutely they um, should absolutely do that yes, yes. <laughs> there's no way that multiplayer is going to be any good no <sighs> but it's it's just it's a disappointment i i was actually planning on going back to this game after when the 1.2 patch came out but I, I feel like I'm just going to wait till I get a, a Series X at this point because that'll probably be when the game is playable. Yeah, I just have zero reason to boot this game up. But also, it's not my type of game, so uh, I can't... I, I'm not a good judge here. I mean, I I mean, it's not my type of game either, but I'm, I'm willing to let go of a certain of my, like, biases towards, like, the RPG genre uh, if I like the setting because it's very similar to Deus Ex. They're both cyberpunk RPGs, and I liked what I played of Deus Ex. So I'm willing to give Cyberpunk another shot, but so far they don't really seem to give me a reason to give it another shot. Um Yeah, it's, it's I mean, supposedly they like didn't even start making the game until years after they announced it at that E3 yeah. with the trailer. Yeah. I I mean, yeah. I, I I don't. There's a made. There was a major failure in in yeah. leadership, and yeah, it's going to be interesting what their next game is going to be. Edward Bova, this game was made for really high end PC. I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> I'm gonna stop you right there because it may have been made for really high end PCs, but it was advertised and marketed as to also be available on the Xbox One and the PlayStation Four. OK, so it is on CD Projekt Red to make sure that that game could work on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. And if not, they should have never marketed it to be available on those systems. They should have waited for the PS5 and the Series X to come out and then advertise it for those systems. Obviously, so don't come. Do not come at me with this. It was designed for PCs crap because obviously it was designed to be on consoles as well. Uh, uh I, 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 it does run better on high end PCs. However, it is still a broken game on high end PCs. Every, everything runs better on high end PCs. I, I'd be surprised if Vine Sauce over here is not playing this on a high end PC. Yeah. I mean, he's playing it on PC. I could see the keyboard layout and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it, that's not an excuse. There was a major I, failure in, 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 uh, in marketing and leadership and, and, directing and everything with this game yeah. it was it, it they 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 fucked up royally yeah and if it's meant for high-end pcs just sell it on the high-end pcs yeah and if they did release it if they did the that cards? it would yeah. still have as much uh bad publicity as it has now 
Because remember, Crisis was made for high-end PCs, and they released it on high-end PCs. We didn't get a console port of Crisis 1 until many years later. And Crisis? Great game. <laughs> yeah. I loved, I loved the original Crisis. Yeah. That's on sale on Switch. I should buy that. Anyway. Yeah. So Crisis... You know, it came out on PC. It was made for high-end PCs. You can only get it on a high-end PC. It wasn't until Crisis 2 that they figured out how to put the, the Crisis, you know, ecosystem on a console. Right. Anyway. Amandowski, Bob, I didn't have any friends stop telling me to play games with my friends. I need to, games to play alone. What do you recommend? I recommend going on, uh, what's it called? Look for Group. <laughs> and you can find I bet you they have one from Monster Hunter yeah otherwise if you want good single player games that's all I pretty much play is single player games <laughs> lfg.com do they have a search how do I search for just Monster Hunter this game, this website looks like shit I take it all back make friends or, yeah. or play Mario 35 until the server's close. Yeah. IG189, thank you for the three months. I appreciate you. Uh, anyway, where are we at? Yes. We got uh, oh more stuff closing down. <laughs> more bad right, news so for everybody. <laughs> We we reported this last week. <laughs> Everything um, was terrible in the world of video games. It, it was rumored and speculated, but now we have official word from Sony. And I actually got an email about this from Sony. Um, PlayStation, the PlayStation Store on PS3, PS Vita, and PSP will be closing down. They, they have officially made the announcement. The PlayStation Store on PS3 and PSP will be closing on July 2nd of this year and on the PS Vita on August 27th. Uh, and they've clarified what this means. Uh, you will still be, you will still have access to, you will still be able to re-download and play previously purchased games. You will still be able to access previously purchased movies and media. You will still be able to redeem game codes and PS Plus vouchers, and you will still be able to re-download and play claim titles through PlayStation Plus as long as you're an active member of PlayStation Plus. You will lose. You will no longer be able to purchase PS3, PS Vita, or PSP digital content, including games and video content. You will no longer be able to make in-game purchases on those systems, you will no longer be able to redeem PSN wallet fund vouchers, aka gift cards, on PS3, Vita, or PSP. Uh, and purchase functionality on these devices will be closed. Your PSN wallet funds will remain in your PSN account, but you will only be able to use your wallet funds to purchase PS4 or PS5 products on the PlayStation Store via the web app, the uh, PlayStation mobile app, or PS4 and PS5 consoles. Uh They've made it very clear that you are able to access the games you've purchased or games you've claimed through PlayStation Plus. You can still download those games, still play those games. Um, it says, I'm only active on PS3, Vita, or PSP. Do not currently have a PS4 or PS5. Uh, it's basically, yeah, they're confirming that if you have money in your PlayStation wallet, that'll just transfer over to the new systems, or you can use it on the website to buy PS4 or PS5 games. Uh, this is not a surprise at all. I mean, it's a digital storefront, of course. It was, it, for an old system, of course, it's going to shut down. It's not a surprise. It's just, it's it's disappointing and it's sad to see. Yeah. Because there, for a lot of these games, there is now no way for you to play them. Mm -hmm. Or purchase them. They're, they're, purchase them, yeah. if Because there were a lot of, digital only ps3 games a lot of digital only vita games or psp games that you just can't get now once these stores close we knew that was going to happen it was obvious that, that was going to happen that eventually right. digital only games are going to lose their servers the next step after right. this is losing the ability to even download them but 
but I guess, you know, it comes to light, especially compared to how Microsoft is handling the situation where they have not closed down the Xbox 360 store where you can still play a lot of Xbox 360 games on your current Xbox system, either Xbox one or series X or S, you know, the fact that they've Microsoft has gone to great lengths to keep their legacy stuff up and running. Whereas Sony, um, has, has now decided to close down those uh, stores. It's just, it's kind of sad and it's disappointing to see it happen. This means that there is currently no way to play PS1 games on any currently available Sony system. Because you can play PS1 games on PS3 and Vita. You know, you can download them or if on the PS3 you can pop the disc in, but now you can't. You can't do either of that. Microsoft has, I think, two things going for them. They have... Uh some of the best server architecture in the world. <laughs> mm-hmm. So they got some servers to spare. Um, and they're really good at forward compatibility. Like they're yes. good at, I mean, they have a great OS structure too. So they're really good at, uh, you know, compatibility, making things work across all different generations and whatnot and across all different types of devices and whatever. Sony is so bad at both of those things. And they've proven themselves yeah. to be bad at both of those things time and yeah. time again. Um, Sony should learn a thing or two from Microsoft about yeah. compatibility. Yeah. Knucker you know, says it's... Bob on the Bill Gates payroll. I wish, dude. I like Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, I just feel like, you know, the fact that now the, the uh, PS1 games are just straight up not available for people after all this time. Because, like, you can't transfer. If you bought a PS1 game on PS3, you can't play them on PS4 or PS5, which doesn't make any real sense. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, hope. I hope your PS3 still works because the second that dies, that's it. Yeah. Um. Um, I mean, there's always people who are playing the old consoles. There's always people yeah. who, who who have held on to their PS3 for all of these years, and that's all they play. Yeah. But uh, it's time. It's time. Move on, dude. Get that PS4. And I might hook up. You know, my PS3 is still hooked up, so I might just pop some games in there. Give it one more go. How? When does this happen? When is? Oh, Ju- July second. You got so much time. Yeah, we got a lot of time. July second for PS P sorry, July second for PS three and PSP, August twenty seventh for PS Vita. It's it's it says you'll still be able to re download games that you yes. already purchased. So yes. uh don't go too crazy. Right. But if you know if you've been holding out on anything or if there's DLC for a game that you haven't gotten yet, get on it. <laughs> Treble Steinberg, thank you for gifting five. What's with all the gifted subs, guys? I appreciate it, but uh, must be a must be a giving what, time. What do we do to deserve this? Thank you, Treble. I think Treble said he was drunk and spending a lot of money on Twitch. Yeah, I'm not gonna complain. Uh, Video Gomez says, "Do you realize that games like Metal Gear Solid Four will now be completely unobtainable? Because yeah, Metal Gear Solid Four is only available on the PS3." Sure, you can find a physical copy of it, but you know you you it would be a much easier time just download it digitally. Yeah, Metal Gear Four is a game that needs to be put somewhere else. Metal Gear Four is a weird game though, because that game was specifically designed for the PlayStation Three. They they make reference to it constantly. Yeah, throughout the game. Travel. Another five gifted. Yeah, he's now the top gifter. I think if it adds them together i think it does thank you travel that's a lot again if you're a new subscriber go to the discord you can get into the supported discord i post videos early there sometimes right here and you can at me in the supporter discord and i can choose to ignore you or not um anyway uh, I want to talk about this. This is something that I found right before we started the show. Niantic. We talked about Niantic last week. Yes. Because they're doing a Pikmin game. Yes. Niantic 
showing a look at a potential AR headset. Oh, that's what that was? Yeah. So Niantic is a company that developed and mastered the idea of AR, augmented reality, gaming on smart devices with Ingress. Uh, I don't wouldn't say they developed it. Uh, <laughs> but the title that, I mean, they, they geographic AR, I guess. Uh, but the title that propelled the company to stratospheric heights was undoubtedly Pokemon Go. It went viral in the summer of 2016 and is still running today. While the company also produced Harry Potter Wizards Unite. I forgot that was a game. Of course, recent Niantic headlines revolve around its Pikmin app, which could not only be rather fun, but also give a boost to Nintendo's IP. The success of the company has also allowed it to spread out into new territory, and CEO John Hank shared one such idea on Twitter this week in the form of AR glasses. Exciting! To see, his tweet says, "Exciting to see the progress we're making to enable new kinds of devices that leverage our platform. Their platform, I guess, being their AR technology." Yeah. So that I don't like the term "our platform." It makes me think that so so they had Ingress, which is you know the geographic augmented yeah. reality situation. They basically copied and pasted that into Pokemon Go. Mm-hmm. The last thing I want is for them to copy and paste Pokemon Go into Pikmin. I would like there to be a lot of new things that can only be in the world of Pikmin. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, now there's some glasses that could potentially do that. <laughs> I mean, they saw that the the wristband for Pokemon Go was a hot item. The Pokeball of Pokemon yes. Go was a hot item. So mm-hmm. there's a there's a market for peripherals for for Niantic. It's not a new idea, though. The technology may now be catching up with the concept in time for Niantic to make it a success. As you can see in the teaser image, the specs would seemingly have a small speaker and an an adjustable strap of sorts so that they could fit anyone. Uh, it's It's certainly a logical step for the higher end and enthusiast market in AR gaming. The question will be how marketable Techno- how marketable and tech- technically possible these glasses would be. Um, also, how much? How much money? Because the Google glasses was like $2,000 and it was just fucking yeah. glasses. Uh, also, what will they be used for? Right now, all they really got is Pokemon Go. Can you imagine if it was just for like Pokemon Go and Pikmin? Like you couldn't use it for anything else? What... That is a possibility. What makes yeah. me think it's not is because it's black and it's, it doesn't look like it's like... It's not branded, yeah. Yeah, it's not within the Pokemon world. It looks like maybe this is just another technology they could potentially sell because they're the leaders in AR. Yeah. But it's really just geographic AR. Um, but this is... they. This could be adjacent to Pokemon Go and Pikmin Go or whatever. This could be mm-hmm. just a new technology that they could leverage to get other apps or to sell to other people. So this might actually have nothing to do with Pokemon Go or Pikmin. Or it could. Who knows? Maybe they're going to do a They Live uh, video game. I would love that. I would totally buy them then. And I would just get into a really long punch up in a parking lot with my friend over it. Well, tell me about Call of Duty heading back to World War II. Uh, Call of Duty is heading back to World War II. Wow. I can't believe it. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, the Call of Duty series is reportedly heading back to World War II in 2021. The next game in the franchise uh, being developed by Call of Duty World War II studio Sledgehammer Games is reportedly called Call of Duty World War II Vanguard. And we'll once again have ties to Warzone, the free-to-play oh. Call of Duty Battle Royale that launched with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh, Call of Duty website Modern Warzone first reported those details, many of which were later backed up by Eurogamer. Uh, one disputed detail is Call of Duty World War II Vanguard's time frame, which Warzone indicated could take place in the 50s, years after World War II ended. 
Eurogamer reported that Vanguard has a traditional World War II setting. So between 1939 and 1945 or 1941 when America entered the fray. Uh, Sledgehammer Games developed uh, 2017's Call of Duty World War II, the first Call of Duty game to be set primarily during uh, that conflict since 2008's World World at War. Sledgehammer uh, founders Glenn Schofield and Michael Condry have since moved on from the studio to form Striking Distance Studios at Crafton and 31st Union at 2K, respectively. Uh, Activision has not officially announced this year's Call of Duty entry other than to say another strong premium release plan for uh, Q4 2021. Um, so I'm glad for Warzone integration in some aspects because I love Warzone. I want them to keep updating it. I want that game to live on forever. It's a great game. I, I, I the, 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 the more they do to that game, I think the better. However, Cold War integration, when they integrated Cold War into <laughs> Warzone, kind of fucked up the whole game. It kind of, they added all these guns that are really cool, but they, they make the game, uh, they're all really powerful and change the way the game plays entirely. So, uh, mm -hmm. I think, I feel like World War II guns could be a huge problem in Warzone. Cause, yeah. Because, like, the whole thing with Warzone is you get all these, you got all these different guns, you put all these attachments on it, you build out your loadout yeah. and stuff. And with World War II guns. Yeah. They like, don't function anywhere near what modern artillery does. Yeah. And how are you going to put attachments on it and stuff? Like, it, it, I feel like I, I don't know how that's going to go. I don't, yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. Bob, it's not bad if you get used to it, you're afraid of change. No. I watched a video today talking about how the time to kill and he's right. The time to kill now because of the war, the cold war guns uh, mm. is so much faster than it was originally when the game first came out. Like you could just get deleted for, for being spotted out in the open. You just get just, just deleted. Um, so do do you knucker? Do you really think that the aug doesn't need to be nerfed? Do you really think that? Do you really think the AUG is perfectly fine as it is? Um, I think I'd respect them more if they just called it what it is. Call of Duty World War II 2. <laughs> this is Ghost of Gordy. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not a surprise Call of Duty is coming out with a new game. Bit yeah. of a surprise I mean, that it's obvious. another World War II game, though. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, because... I didn't play well, World War II, even though I have it. Uh, but I played Modern Warfare. And the only reason why... I, one of the only reasons why I got it was because I thought, you know, after all this time, it would give me a new Call of Duty experience. But I played it, and it's the exact same game I played all those years ago. Like, it's, it makes me think that, like, they didn't really evolve past That's, what they were. That was my problem with Call of Duty. Ever yeah. since Black Ops 2, I was like, all right, I'm done with Call of Duty. This, mm -hmm. I've, I've had it off. Actually, I think I played Black Ops 4 for two seconds. But then they had a Battle Royale in Black Ops 4. So I played that. And I liked that. Um, the Battle Royale aspect makes me, wa makes me like Call of Duty again because it's a different game. It's a new right. thing. It's different. But it still has the great gun mechanics that call of duty has yeah um in terms of campaign i think it's i i think it's the same thing over and over again yeah and the story was never good in call of duty i'm sorry the story was never good the, the, the story was passable but the problem is passable only works once or twice I, I yeah i shouldn't say it was bad i just didn't care for the story as i was playing the game i was playing the game for the mechanics and stuff it had the, cool the, the, scenarios the scenarios yeah, were that's awesome the thing. yeah but but yeah, the actual but that, story just i was completely just went over my well, head i didn't the, need it that was the thing because like the scenarios were really cool and like they would draw you in but the problem is you know they keep trying to one-up the scenarios and then they expand on it by adding this like unnecessarily complicated dime store thriller story that make that like tries to act like it's more important than it actually is um and it just makes the whole thing seem that much more ridiculous and uninteresting 
Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, Black Ops 4 was the one that got... Which one got rid of multi, uh, a campaign? Which one got rid of the Black, campaign? Black Ops 4 did not have sing, uh, single player. I think 3 was the last campaign that I played then. Yeah. And uh, because I like fell through the ground and it, I lost connection during the single player. It had a little yeah, like yeah, Ethernet unplug thing. I remember thing. that, yeah. That was the last one that I tried. Uh, but Black Ops 4 I got because of the 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 Battle Royale, and I liked that a yeah. lot. I honestly think that they... Sh- everybody was mad that it didn't have a single player. I think every once in a while, take out the single player. Not necessary. I feel... I think the problem was they charged $60 for a multiplayer-only game. I think that Call of Duty is... Like, the Call of Duties that we get every year, like Modern Warfare... Mm-hmm is worth more than $60. I think just no. the multiplayer is worth $60. I don't I don't think those games are worth more than $60. I, I think don't, I think because... when you throw a campaign in there, you get the multiplayer in there. The Warzone's a completely different game. Um and you got in Cold War you got zombies. I think it's worth more than $60. I don't think so. I don't think it is only because they they put them out every year like clockwork. They're they're like Madden games at this point. Uh, yeah. they, they just keep coming out and coming out. They're they're losing. They lose their value because there's so many and there's so little difference between them. I would never say that the single player is worth sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> the single player alone is not worth sixty dollars at all. No, absolutely not. Yeah, I think the single player. I think the multiplayer is worth sixty dollars on its own. I think you throw the 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 single player in there and you throw zombies in there or whatever other bullshit they got going on. I think it might be worth a little more than six dollars. No, I think I think at this point it's they because they've devalued it. They've devalued it just by releasing it every year right. since you know two thousand and four or whatever. So by this point, you know I don't want to spend sixty dollars on the same game I've been playing year after year. If I if Vanguard is interesting, then I'll wait you know, a year or two and get it on sale. But I don't think Call of Duty is worth, unless you play it competitively, I don't think Call of Duty is worth getting at launch. Boo, Boom External says, I'm sorry, but with how broken these games launch, they are not worth $60. If they actually launched well and bug-free, maybe. I only ever had a problem with the single, like, like, like technically, I only ever had a technical problem with the single player of black ops 3 i've never had any technical problems with any other call of duty game yeah even at launch there are plenty of other games that launched that are totally broken yeah i remember battlefield 4 for the playstation 4 didn't work for two weeks you just oh, couldn't play yeah. it for two weeks that was that was bad and that was really bad because like they were like all the websites reviewed it before the game came out and they gave it like good scores and then the game came out and it didn't work and they like they no nobody changed their reviews on their site or like made addendums to it mm-hmm. that, that was a bad look uh wa fabio says overwatch was 40 dollars multiplayer only true that was a yes. very good value however it yes. didn't have a lot of maps it was like barely no. any maps no but it did have some phenomenal character design that yeah that that game was all about characters and like every character played differently call Mm -hmm. of duty every character plays the same yes it's all about the guns in call of duty will yeah and the maps remember back in the day for the 360 there would be map packs every few months there would be three for every call of duty game Mm -hmm. 15 dollars each so you would end up spending more than 60 dollars on your call of duty yeah um so now these games that come out every year are cheaper than they used to be (laughs) yeah um anyway uh did i say king shiro sheer king shiro neko thank you for the subscription uh will limited run games make a doom thing here you go. If there you've been is. holding out for a physical copy on classic Doom games, uh, 
you might be interested to read on. Physical Specialist Limited Run Games have announced the Doom Classics Collection is coming to Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4. It contains Doom, Doom 2, and Doom 3. Uh, pre-orders open this Friday, April 2nd, and close on May 2nd. There are three versions of, of this release, a standard edition, a special edition, and a collector's edition. Ooh. Yeah. You got, oh. some, you got some nifty things. What? It's a lot going on here. Yeah. So the standard edition is just basically the game uh, with a reversible cover, uh, which is nice. The special edition comes with uh, a key card replica, a Doom uh, floppy disk USB drive, um, a steel book, uh, a comic book, and a couple of other things. The premium edition comes with a shadow box with lights and sounds. That's what that is. They have a video for it. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. I think it plays the sound. It's the... Wow. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's... I mean, I don't know if they'll be able to fit all three games on one cart. Probably, because these are old games, but... This is this is neat. <laughs> it looks like two. It looks like there's two cartridges. Where do you see that? Uh oh no, it's a reversible cover. Yeah, it's a reversible cover. So you can choose between the, the original Doom art or the Doom 2 art. Right, right. Uh it's 80 bucks. And then 130 for the one with the shadow boxes. But you can just get the regular ass version for 30 bucks. Oh, just the cartridge. Yeah. Cool. Just the cartridge, yeah. Yeah. That is pretty cool. When does that... Yeah. Oh, Friday, April 2nd at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's for the pre-order, yeah. Uh, which reminds me, I never bought uh, Scott Pilgrim from Limited Run Games. Let me see if that's still available. I bet you it is not. I think you missed the boat, Will. Probably. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, PAX East is canned, right? This is the next one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, PAX, PAX East, uh, PAX East 2021 canceled, replaced with PAX Online in July. While convention organizers held out hope for until the last minute, it turns out early June was still a bit too soon for thousands of gamers to descend upon Boston for PAX East 2021. Um, the live event has now been canceled, replaced with a special PAX online event in July. I thought it was in September that they pushed it to. Apparently not. Last year's not. PAX East in Boston held February 27th through March 1st. Was awesome, by the way. Was one of the last big live gaming conventions to proceed uh, before COVID-19 shut everything down. Even though exhibitors like Sony pulled out at the last minute, hey, hey, due to health and safety <laughs> concerns, those concerns continue in 2021. And while Penny Arcade and Reed Pop, who are the ones responsible for it, are still hopeful for PAX West and PAX Unplugged in September and December, respectively, it's still too soon for June 3rd to 6th for PAX East. Fortunately, convention organizers did not sell tickets to this year's PAX East, nor did they sell exhibitor space, so the cancellation shouldn't come to any major uh, may, may any major hassle. So this is big news here at the Wolf Den, because we go to PAX yes. every year. It's a great time. I love PAX East. Every year it's in February or March. It's cold as shit in Boston. Boston's a pain in the ass to get around if you don't have a car, and even if you do have a car, it's a pain in the ass to get around. Yeah. The convention center is on the water on its own little island. It's such a pain in the ass to get to if you don't if you're not at one of those hotels. And the last year I was staying at a hotel that was really close and it was it still sucked because you had to walk <laughs> 10 minutes in the freezing cold. This year, finally got a spot at the hotel that's basically in the convention center. Finally. And then they fucking canceled Baxis. <laughs> <laughs> um I didn't, they said that they were going to cancel it and move it to July. Um, I didn't move the hotel room to July because I was like, that's not going to happen. And it didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, they're hopeful for PAX West in September. I'd be willing to bet that's not going to happen either. 
Um, I think this year, no conventions. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. I think next year, everyone's going to go ham on conventions. The oh, next absolutely. year, everything's going to everything's going to be everyone's going to be out all the time. I saw something that like San Diego Comic Con is going to try to do something in, around Thanksgiving, but I don't think that's a a good idea or b something that's <laughs> gonna happen uh fred says boston is an awful city i love it (laughs) i think boston is great i think its layout is bad (laughs) yeah and it is cold that's all that's Mm -hmm. that's all i gotta say about boston i do like boston i just think why is everything gotta be all twisty also they take their sports rivalry very seriously up there true like we we have to hide the fact we're from new york or if they find out like we have to just let them know that we are mets fans greg (laughs) wears a yankee hat and he he wore it in boston and somebody said some shit (laughs) i forgot it was our our taxi driver (laughs) oh what did he say he's like you sure about wearing that hat here buddy oh god City was laid out before cars. Impossible. Cars were invented before. Yeah. Uh, before Boston. Impossible. You know what? You know what? Other city was laid out before cars. New York City. <laughs> it's true. It's a good point. We made it a grid for a reason. Yeah. It worked out good. Um, that's not to say New York doesn't have its own fair share of bullshit, but Boston has way more. It doesn't yeah. make. I'm looking at a map of Boston. It makes no sense. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, I love PAX East. I last year would have been my first PAX, PAX West. PAX is my favorite convention, mm-hmm. and I've never been to PAX West. And then they canceled PAX West. I would have gone to PAX West because I wasn't going to go to E3. Uh, but uh, anyway, sad to see this happen, but also not surprising. Yeah. I will be there next year. Next year will be fine for all these conventions. It's better to be safe. Everybody stay your ass home. Speaking of Battlefield, Battlefield Twitter responds to rumors with spaghetti. What? Excuse me, Will. The official Battlefield Twitter account has responded to a list of rumored features for the next Battlefield game with its own list that describes the features of spaghetti. Using the hashtag spaghetti, uh, mimicking the hashtag Battlefield used for the original rumors post, the Battlefield tweet goes on to describe the many flagship features of the popular Italian food stuff. Hold on. Uh, Stop. I want to read I want to read the original tweet. Okay. And then we'll and then we'll continue. Okay. R- Roberto Serrano tweeted hashtag Battlefield. Modern warfare. That's a poor choice of words. Large yeah. scale and close quarters battles from 16 up to 128 players. Battle Royale, free to play early 2022. Soldiers, weapons, vehicle customizations, next level destruction, stunning visual effects, frostbite engine, god damn it. Release <laughs> fall 2021, PC, PS5, Xbox Series X. And then it's a big picture that says Battlefield in the Battlefield text. Right. Um, now, should we read so, the Battlefields or do you want to read the article? Well, I'll just say that, like, this, I mean, this list that he has here. There's nothing really revelatory no. about it. Like, you know, the Battlefield has done modern combat games before, so this could just be a return to that. Large scale and close quarters battles, all the Battlefield games have that. Uh, 128 players on PC, PS5, and Series X, that's a big deal. But Battlefield has always been known for, like, huge online multiplayer battles. Uh Everything else is just stuff that all the other Battlefield games have. So this is kind of a bad prediction list. Yeah, this this is everything that Battlefield has had for the last at least two games. Um, yeah. The only difference is Battle Royale. Yeah. And free-to-play. Um, which I think is the natural progression of Battlefield. I mean, the big yeah. deal about the, uh, the last couple of Battlefield games is that they're massive and... Uh, and there's a lot of players in the server yeah. and it's but it was team based 
I, now battle royale is the thing it would be so easy to just make it squad based and yeah. that's it and that they also had squads in the last battlefield games it's just yeah the squads were all on the same team mm-hmm. um right. i think uh, this sounds great yeah now for battlefield's response <laughs> yes hashtag spaghetti mm-hmm Noodly, slippy, good with sauce, good with garlic bread. True. Is spaghetti can be used as decoration, mm. always available, also available as pasta. And then the image in the battlefield font, spaghetti. Yeah. I have spaghetti and meatballs waiting for me. I am so hungry right now. It is in the kitchen right now. Uh... Honestly, though, perfect response because all of this is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> the only the only thing that's different is the battle royale, but uh, yeah, we could assume that. So, I like this. Yeah, this uh, this more more gaming Twitter accounts should respond to rumors and stuff like this. <laughs> yes, yes, because it's it's much better than just saying we don't comment on rumors or speculation. Yeah. Because uh, there's just no... That's not saying anything. This is at least make a yeah. joke about it, you know? Uh, uh, what do we got? One more? Oh, Last here's one. here's one that I put in, Will. Yeah, I, I saw this. Uh, I'm glad you put it in. <laughs> Big Chungus is coming to a Looney Tunes mobile game. Looney Tunes World of Mayhem is a gotcha game. Uh, with battle elements in which players try to obtain rare characters from the Looney Tunes canon and then pit them against each other in battle. One character coming to the game in April is a little unusual. It's Big Chungus, the big old boy who has appeared in many a meme over the years. And here it is. Here's a little... little. Uh... Wow, it looks like they made a new like render of him. The yeah, tweet no, they from... definitely did. The tweet from Looney Tune World of Mayhem says... Your world may not be ready for him, but our world of mayhem is. And it's Big Chungus like coming around like the globe. He's like yeah. peeking out from under the globe. World of Mayhem is a is a game on the surf is a simple game on the surface, but it has a single a surprising amount of depth. Its fan community often talks about the best team combinations and strategies, not only to do players have to manage their roster, but they also have to upgrade facilities. Play in limited time events and compete in wars against other groups of players. The action is depicted in a pretty silly fashion. It's Looney Tunes, after all. Battles are won by dropping anvils on your foes or using comically oversized Acme tools. Big Chungus is a legendary minion, and his associated event, Chungabunga, runs from April 2nd to April 6th. The event is actually happening fast as your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a big one. New event, new tune, Big Chungus Legendary. So he's rare. Other featured tunes, mm. Petunia Pig, Sam, Sam, Sheepdog. We don't care about any of that. Foghorn Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn. That's a big one. And the Granny. Egghead Jr., Porky Pig, Henry Hawk, uh, the Mighty An- Angelo, Bugs Bunny, Miss Prissy, and Chef Porky. Who is the Mighty Angelo? I feel like I oh. wouldn't know him if I saw him. I don't know him. I don't know him. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to have to go on watch Looney Tunes cartoons tonight. I'll do it <laughs> for research. He is a big, tough, and manly muscular green flea who possesses uh, immense physical strength for his small size. Interesting. So there you go. You can play Big Chungus now. He is yeah. he, Big Chungus has is is officially canon now. Yes, is what uh, that, is what that means. Fans have been asking for Big Chungus for years now, but it's still a surprise to see him officially debut in the game. It, it definitely is. I remember like a few years ago when the big chungus meme was at its peak. 
um and the official looney tunes youtube channel put the uh, the cartoon where big chungus comes from on their channel and they made him the thumbnail <laughs> And then you that is a watch brilliant it. move. That's a good. They they know what they're doing. But then you watch it and you get to that part where Chungus appears. It, it's it's basically it's Bugs Bunny making fun of Elmer Fudd. So he like he makes himself look all fat like Elmer Fudd. Mm-hmm. And the, and the card in the corner reads, "You skipped to this, didn't you?" Oh. So like they know what's up. <laughs> wow. That is smart. And all the comments were like, just, it's just the timestamp. Well, that's all the news. Yep. Except for one bit of news. Hit it. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Yeah. It's the tweet of the week, and I literally just found it. Uh, <laughs> it's by AC underscore rolled. And it is our president. It's, 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 it's him falling up the stairs and then falling into a fight with Bowser. Um, this was tweeted at me from the weeb den Twitter account. (laughs) Uh, I just want you to know. I remember seeing that one it was like Joe Biden's pro skater, and then they took him falling, but they moved him over to the rail and they added a skateboard <laughs> underneath him. Guys, we're going to talk to you now. Yes. If you left a comment over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden podcast, this is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Um, no, let's make it quick. I got fucking spaghetti waiting for me. Yeah. Tyler says, question for Will. This is from last week's Wolfden Live in the comments on the YouTube video. Question for yes. Will. I realize that this may not be a parenting channel, but do you have any tips for a brand new dad like myself? Thank you for such amazing quality content. Well, first of all, congratulations on the birth of your child. That's great. The the number one bit of advice I always give, I've I'll always give, I've been doing this for a year, but the number one advice I've been giving to people is if somebody asks if they can do anything for you or offers for help, take them up on it because you will need it. Like never be afraid to ask for help. And if somebody offers help or offers to do something for you, and take them up on it. It could be something as simple as, hey, do you want me to bring lunch over? Or something major like, do you want me to look after your kid for you for a little bit so that you can nap or run to the store or whatnot? Because you you don't realize how hard it is to take care of a child, especially like a newborn child, until you actually have to do it. So little things like that make all the difference in the world. So whenever somebody asks for help, um, take it or don't be afraid to ask for help yourself because they, they will be willing to help you in any way they can. Uh, we got may the goo be with you. Oh no. Just picked up a DS light again so I can get back into GBA games. Any ones you guys recommend mega man zero. It's my go-to GBA game. Uh, the Metroid games on GBA were great. Yes, Fusion uh, is great. Fusion. Um, I've heard Zero Mission is also very good. Uh, what was, what was Castlevania, that one that we had was good. Yes. Uh, I've also heard Aria of Sorrow, the third one that came out, is probably the best. Um, there's a game. You're not going to be able to find it because it's, it's very rare. But there's a game called Ninja 5.0 that was very good. So if you find that game and it's not a hundred dollars, get that. <laughs> um also you can get an R4 for that friggin' DS Lite is great, great investment. 
uh benjamin isaac says will i remember you what's with all the will questions <laughs> will, i remember you suggesting the josie the pussycats in space comic but i have yet to find it who is it published by and have you read deadly class published by image comics so josie and the pussycats in space um that's josie and the pussycats is an archie comics title but i think in space was digital only so i think you can only find that on comiXology that being said you definitely should because it's a great series um it's basically josie and the pussycats meets alien it's fantastic uh i have not read deadly class i've heard good things i like the the writer of that series rick remender um so i have a couple of issues of that maybe i'll check that out when i'm done with all the, the batman back issues i'm reading bango shank in the chat says question for bob will how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. I got a uh, pee, but I can wait. Lord of Cicadas? Ew. It says Google actually says Bob's 25 because of his LinkedIn. When was the last time you updated your LinkedIn? Hold on. I got it. I got it. Oh, God. I'm, make, I'm doing a series of terrible mistakes. <laughs> um, Where is my LinkedIn? I have not touched my LinkedIn apparently until I was 25. Okay, dude, like I got to log in. Oh, is a 25 year old graphic artist. Oh, looks like I got to log into LinkedIn and de just delete it. Why do I have that? Yeah. Or I'll just forever be 25. Um, and Melon says around the new around the time the new Mario and 3DS were first announced, I heard that the English word "new" was a prefix used for a variety of products and marketing in Japan, akin to when an English product used a, a Japanese term when it probably doesn't really apply. Sort of a meaningless marketing term thrown on to make a public uh, to make a product seem better than the last one just like throwing pro on the end of something even though there's nothing professional about it but i heard that a long time ago so i don't know how accurate it is i remember new being a bigger deal like i remember new being a thing for nintendo yeah. um but apparently i, I must have been wrong i don't have any hard evidence for that It'd be nice to see if there is a series of like new stuff that was happening in Japan. Yeah. I see the chat going crazy. Uh, oh, we were rated by beat em ups. How was your podcast? Uh, Welcome to this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Is there a Tuesday where you're not doing your podcast so you can do my podcast? <laughs> that would be fun. Um, we are always an hour late to yours, Bob. Well, uh, yeah, you're at the you're at the Q and A part. Welcome. Yeah. By the way, we're in the chat now. Yeah. So ask some good questions. While yeah. you do, I'll just say that you were right. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is currently sold out at limited run games. However, it is your last chance to pre-order the Terminator Resistance Enhanced Edition for PS5. Edrew says, Bob, Gizmo or Grogu? But he put a comma after Bob. So it's like either me, Gizmo, or Grogu. That's <laughs> what the question is asking. Yeah. I would like to say Gizmo, but if we're talking about fighting, Grogu every day. He was winning oh, every absolutely. fight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hands down. Bob, have I you used I've the Princess seen... Peach shampoo? Is This is the second time I got that question today. And no, because yeah. I use hymns. And it's very important that I use hymns. <laughs> Sorry, what what you see what now? I was just saying, like, I think I've seen Gremlins 2, like God knows how many times. I think I've only seen the original Gremlins once. And I know that's blasphemy. And I should probably fix that. If you've only Not seen right it once, now, that means that I've either only seen it once or never. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think the problem was like because Gremlins 1 came out in like 84, I want to say. And then, you know, Gremlins 2 didn't come out until, like, closer to the 90s. And by that point, Gremlins 2 was always on TV. And, you know, we weren't born until after 84, so we always saw Gremlins 2. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Tiny Carrot says, hey, Will, what did you think of the Snyder Cut? And I think he I knows. 
I think he knows that he's just he's just getting you to to plug your YouTube video. Yeah, so if you head on over to uh, youtube.com slash Will Wolf, uh, you can see my uh, thoughts on the Snyder Cut. Spoiler alert, ain't that great. <laughs> I put it in the chat. I linked it to the chat. Thanks. You need to take the, you need to switch the playlists on your homepage, put uploads at the top. Yeah, I don't know why it did that. I, I know I got to fix it. I got a lot of reworking of that I have to do. It's on the docket. <laughs> Uh, Meta says, Sension, uh, Will, thoughts, speculation about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Also, what should I know before watching Invincible? Uh, well, with Invincible, it's, you know, it's just, the, it's just started. So you, you don't really need to know anything going in because I think they're just going to start from the beginning. All you really need to know, it's like it's Robert Kirkman's own created superhero. And it's very similar to Spider-Man in what I understand, but a lot bloodier. Um, so there's that Falcon and Winter Soldier. I like the two episodes um, that have aired so far. I'm really excited to see uh, where they take it. I like it because that and WandaVision are very different from what they do in the movies. Like they're actually trying to be different things rather than the Marvel films are just Marvel films with, you know, the flavor of a different genre or the flavor of a different directorial style. These are actively trying to be different uh, styles and genres. CM0011. Since Wood won't, can you stream Pokemon my ass? You know what? Maybe. I just pulled up a YouTube video. Here's the opening. Booty butt cheeks. Booty butt cheeks. <laughs> All right, that's a that obviously is not part of the intro. <laughs> nope. I don't know what the difference is though. I literally just think it's got an ass in the beginning, and uh, your shirt's off for some reason. <laughs> I mean, it's on YouTube. Why wouldn't I be able to stream it? Right. Yeah. I think there might be some new gym leaders though. Are so... they sexy gym leaders? I have to, I mean, they're all probably children. <laughs> um, Good point. I feel like I need to have like a dump button if I if I stream this game. So like if something yeah. happens, I can just, you know, cut the last like seven seconds of the stream. Uh, are you sure that audio isn't in it? No, you know what? I'm not entirely sure. Um. Uh, Angry Eric says you two are always my podcast for long drives when working and evenings I can game that is great Angry Eric yeah I'm glad to hear that Mecha Dragon Bob uh, you gotta try French Vanilla from G Fuel get sponsored by them Uh, I'm not gonna say anything because I was just raided by Wood and he has a G Fuel sponsorship <laughs> ask me again on another stream <laughs> Um, I'll tell you what though, trade coffee, fucking f phenomenal. Just just open up my my other bag that I got, and my man, it is uh, it is awesome. Uh, Luke Skywalker is bisexual. I think that's canon. Uh, is Joy-Con shell swap worth it? I want to make them be one purple and one gold. Have you ever opened up an electronic before and successfully closed it? If you have, then maybe it might be worth it. Uh, I th don't think I would recommend it to any of my friends. That being said, all of my friends are dumb. So, yes. <laughs> uh, I don't, like, I, when, when I was, like, in high school or, like, early college maybe i would have done stuff like that but uh these days i just want to buy something and have it work so yeah uh it seems less worth it now but if you like to mess around with stuff then yes it's totally worth it he, he as said, long as uh, you have an extra joy con and you're willing to break the one that you have because yeah. it's possible purple and, purple and gold was the were the colors yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. you can just buy 
the Nintendo of uh, the official Nintendo purple and orange. That's kind of a goldish orange. That is Joy-Con. true. Um, I I had to recently replace the battery in my mother in law's iPhone six. Ouch. That was scary because I'd never done anything like that before, but I was successful. Would you say I have enough experience then to do a Joy-Con shell swap? Uh, yes. Well, okay. Yes. I think iPhones are really hard. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. As long as you follow it to the T. The yeah. ribbon cables are the hardest part because they, uh, they're they very delicate. Uh, yeah. But you, you should be fine. As long as you're not afraid to break something because you might break it. Right. Well, I mean, I've, I had to... This year, I've done the most computer maintenance crap that I've ever had in my life. I replaced the RAM and hard drive in my wife's uh, old MacBook, because this one you can still do that on. And I had to replace the battery in my mother-in-law's iPhone. Uh, I've never done anything like that before, and both of them went successful. So I think I guess what I'll do is I'll buy my wife Joy-Cons. <laughs> it'll be hers. And then I'll put the shells on. If I just pretend they're hers, it'll be okay. This is the last question I'm reading. Oh, oh wait, we got a uh, we got thirty bits from Mecha Dragon. I just cut my hours in my late night job. Now I have more time to practice drawing and look for an actual good job. Gonna make you boys proud. Thank you, Mecha Dragon. You. I'm glad that you're learning how to how to do that stuff. That is good. Last question, Metacentrus says, how convincing or cheesy is the wood grain on the RG351V? I tweeted a picture of this. This is the next video um, for hopefully Thursday. If all goes well, uh, I think I can do this. But yeah, oh, it's dark. Uh, this guy it is actually really freaking sick. Uh, it is definitely fake wood grain, but <laughs> it's like that vinyl that you can like, you know, put on floors and stuff. It actually feels oh, like pretty yeah, legit. Yeah. You don't the, like there's a texture. It's obviously not like the real texture, but it could yeah. it could pass for 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 it looks really good. It looks really good. This it's probably better if I just go like this. It looks it looks it looks good. It's not just like painted on. I mean, it is just painted on, but it yeah. kind of feels like that vinyl stuff. It's good. Uh, even better than that, it's an actually good device. Anyway, uh, I think I'm good. Uh, yeah. Thank you all Thank you. for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put an archive version of it up over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So go and check it out over there and watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, so you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast over on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter how you experience this show, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, nobody leave yet. I will be rating somebody. I don't know who. Um, what's Zane doing? Everybody go watch this music guy, Zane Carney. He's great. Uh, he apparently played with John Mayer. I don't know. Okay. Uh, he's really, he's got a great stream though. It looks really nice. Everybody go over there and say hi, and I'll see you Thursday. If if I'm feeling saucy, I might. Sh uh, I kind of want to see if Mario Thirty Five is still gonna be up, but uh, <laughs> I'll probably be streaming on Thursday. I got a new video coming out on this guy. It's gonna be good because I really like this thing. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.